he set out to make his mark on New York. The all-American entrepreneur. He's a rags to riches story. The ultimate American dream. In his mind, he always wanted to build the world's tallest building. The daring, the drama. There's a holdout. The danger. There were no hard hats. There was no safety equipment. How the king of the dime store built the cathedral of commerce. It was a church to the dollar. The Woolworth Building. I'm Stuart Varney, and this is American Built. In the retail game, bigger is better. From the fur trade to the cola wars to online shopping, larger-than-life entrepreneurs have battled it out for market share and prestige. At the dawn of the 20th century, the competition to become king of the hill was playing out high above the city streets. The skyscraper was born in Chicago, but when the Windy City put a cap on height, the scramble to build the tallest building shifted to the Big Apple. And they shot up in New York, outdoing Chicago very quickly, one building after the other. The New York World Building, the Park Row Building, the Singer Building, each one set a new world record. It became a game of height. But the game was deadly serious. Done right, a skyscraper could be extremely profitable. If you own a company and you can afford to build a skyscraper, you build much more space than you need for your own purposes. And now you have all this rental income from the rest of the building. Making money? That was music to the ears of the undisputed king of the five and dime, Frank Woolworth. Frank Woolworth starts out as a very poor farmer in upstate New York and he comes up with the concept of a five and 10 cent store. He figured out that you could sell a lot more if you sold it really cheaply, and that became an empire. And ironically, all those nickels and dimes made him a multimillionaire. The rags to riches farm boy could afford anything his heart desired. And so he said, hey, I'm a rich and important man. I need to show that. I need a world headquarters in the city that is the heart of industry and commerce. One of the purposes of the building was uh, as an ad for Woolworth. It was, you know, create an impression. People will talk about, look, look at this. For his headquarters, the famous bargain hunter spared no expense. He stunned the banks when he laid out $13.5 million in cash. Now that's a lot of nickels and dimes. You're talking about a building that's probably a billion dollars in today's money. Woolworth would name the building for his famous five and dime, but he stipulated that his high-class headquarters would never rent space to one of his 10-cent stores. The building is supposed to be a high-end showpiece, and he feels that a five and 10 cent store is not worthy of the building. But those retail stores were his bread and butter. And as his empire grew to more than 300 of them, Woolworth mastered the art of location, location, location. Woolworth would observe very carefully the streets of towns and cities, looking for crowds, because once he identified that location, that's where he would choose a site for a store. But Woolworth actually spent money on his stores to make them attractive, filled with light, to make their facades beautiful. When it came time to choose a location for his headquarters, Woolworth shopped around. He bought up property right near Wall Street, but not on Wall Street, in the area that was moving further uptown. He started buying up a quarter acre lot on the corner of Broadway and Park Place. Woolworth uh, selected a site that was facing City Hall Park and it can't ever be blocked because the park wasn't going to go away. But it was still a gigantic gamble. He was stretching the real estate market. There was far too much office space in lower Manhattan. So how was Woolworth going to ever get any tenants? Woolworth had an answer for that. Make the building irresistible. Yes, he wanted the building to be beautiful. So he goes out and he hires one of the fanciest architects in New York, Cass Gilbert. 
Cass Gilbert was a Midwestern architect with East Coast ambitions. His Minnesota state capital, with its record-setting dome, catapulted him to national fame. Gilbert was a phenomenon. His career began with a uh, state capitol building, you know, which is a huge job to get as an architect. It went from um, being someone that no one had heard of to being uh, one of the, the top architects in the country in just a few years. But Gilbert dreamed of building much, much higher. He wanted to build the world's tallest skyscraper. So once he meets Woolworth, he sees an opportunity. But Woolworth had his own very particular tastes. When Woolworth met Gilbert, he told him specifically that he wanted his design modeled on the Victoria Tower at the Houses of Parliament. Woolworth liked Gothic buildings. So Gilbert showed Woolworth his eye-popping West building in Lower Manhattan. It was one of the first skyscrapers built in the neo-Gothic style. Woolworth loved it. And Woolworth said, I want one of those. And it needs to be absolutely beautiful. Gilbert began plans for a Gothic tower reminiscent of an ancient European cathedral. The height of this building was very in various schemes between 430 feet high and 550 feet high. But the micromanaging client kept revising the architect's plans. Woolworth kept saying, higher, higher. Well, no, wait a second. Maybe we have to make sure we can rent it all out. No, no, higher, higher. The two men settled on a U-shaped floor plan that would allow light to every office on the first 20 floors. Above that, a slender tower decorated with intricate Gothic details would be capped off 420 feet above the street. The base of the ambitious structure would take up the entire block. But Woolworth didn't own the entire block and one property owner on Barclay Street refused to sell. There's a holdout. There's always a holdout. The heavy-hitting Woolworth was ready to play hardball. He raised the buildings on the part of the lot he did own and started digging. There's no contractor for the project. There's no builder for the project. He just decides he's going to build it.